do it is to defy all common sense and logic, walking across 1200 degree red hot embers barefoot. Yet, firewalking has become a popular motivational exercise around the world. But how is firewalking possible? Does it really require a positive mental state? Or is it simply a lot less dangerous than it looks? As soon as you believe that you can do this without burning your feet, you have the confidence to take that first step. The people who promote firewalking claim that your mind somehow protects your foot, but it's normal physics that's operating in a firewalk. From tribal rituals to New Age seminars, firewalking has been a human rite of passage for over 3,000 years. And today, firewalking is still practiced by a variety of cultures all over the world. This is actually a very ancient tradition. Uh, the Buddhist religion had firewalking in it. The Hindu religion had firewalking in it. The Native Americans firewalk. The fire is really a metaphor. Tali Burkan is, is the founder of FIRE, fire. the, the Firewalking fire Institute of Research and Education, cool which conducts self-improvement seminars, utilizing firewalking as an inspirational tool. The next time you're in a situation that used to intimidate you, you will remember, I walked on fire. And if I can do that, Certainly, I can go in there and ask for a raise. To prepare a fire walk, Burkan burns large oak logs down to sizzling red embers, creating a bed of coals. The resulting heat reaches a temperature of over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I joined Burkan's group for a night of fire walking and wondered, how could this not burn my bare skin? Burkan believes positive thinking actually changes the body's physiology allowing a firewalker to cross these coals safely. When you are in the right state of mind, the blood flows through the soles of your feet and takes the temperature away from the tissue. And that's why you're not burned. None of it has to do with the, their psychological state. All of it has to do with ordinary physics. Dr. Bernard Lichen is a physicist and firewalking skeptic. You don't burn your feet in a firewalk because you're walking on things that have poor thermal conductivity and a low heat capacity. Even though they're at a high temperature, they don't have as much energy as you might think, and they aren't very good at putting it into your foot. To understand the physics, imagine baking a cake. The cake's been in the oven for half an hour. Everything in the oven is at 325 degrees, but you don't worry about the 325 degree air burning you or the 325 degree cake, only the 325 degree cake pan. Earlier that day, as the wood was burned in preparation, Burkan's anxious group was preparing to take their fiery stroll. Among them, Katherine Johnson. I think that the mental preparation before the fire walking is going to be very important because I don't feel like confident enough to do it right now. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Would Burkan's inspirational speech give Katherine the confidence to fire walk and protect her from injury? Fire is a symbol for all the things you thought you couldn't do, for all of the things that have ever intimidated you. If you can walk across this fire tonight, I promise you, you will not forget this night as long as you're alive. And what about me? I made it a point of avoiding Burkan's speech so as not to be influenced. Finally, the temperature of the coal soars past 1,000 degrees. The firewalk is ready, and Catherine has decided to do it. Burkan leads the way, taking the first step down the fiery path. The others follow, including Catherine. It was pretty hot and hurt my feet a little bit, but nothing serious. And I had a really great time doing this. It makes me feel great. Now it's my turn. Remember, I was in my car during Tolly's speech and was not part of the supposedly critical mental preparation. Well, my feet feel great. There's no pain. There's no burning on them at all, just a little charcoal. I could do it again. I could do it three or four times. No problem. It's just physics. It's conductivity of heat. It's not psychic power. It's not chanting. But Burkan is quick to point out that my confidence in the scientific theory behind firewalking could have been what protected my feet from the red-hot embers. 
whether you're a physicist and you believe in the laws of physics, or whether you're someone who just believes in me because you trust me, as soon as you walk into the fire with a belief that you're not going to burn your feet, you are in a different physiological state than the person who thinks they're going to get burned. I think it's still just heat conductivity. The reason people don't get burned is because it's just not that hot. I didn't get burned, and I didn't chant, I didn't meditate, and I wasn't thinking positive thoughts. In fact, I was nervous. It's not the people who don't get burned that are a curiosity. I still am waiting for an explanation. Well, why, why are people really badly burned? I've seen people horrifically burned. While I don't buy into Tolly's psychological theory, Katherine Johnson does. I'm very glad I had the opportunity to do this. I think the mental preparation was very important to the safety of this. And Katherine believes her firewalk will have lasting effects. This was a wonderful experience. Sometime I'll be afraid of questioning a teacher or something and say, oh, I walked on fire. I can do this. I'm not trying to use the firewalk as an example of contradicting any physical laws. I'm trying to give you a sense of what's possible so you can experience the exhilaration of breaking through your limiting beliefs, which will give you the courage to attempt things you might not have attempted before. Whether you accept Tali Burkan's explanation or the scientific theory, one thing is certain, under the proper controlled conditions, anyone can walk on fire and live to tell about it.